Hello everyone, we're outside on this beautiful, soon to be fall day. We're mid-September, so we're not quite in that fall season quite yet, but it feels like it. It feels like fall, the leaves are changing, the days are shorter, the shadows are longer, and the garden is coming out. So to me, we're pretty much in fall. We're just about there, another week, and we'll be officially there by the calendar gate, I, I guess, so to speak. I so. Guess. Um, as you can see in front of us, uh, we got a shipment in this last week. Uh, our extractor along with a few other supplies that we picked up. There was a few things extra that we wanted to get, but we were kind of behind the ball when we did this order. So there's a lot of things that were sold out already, but I think we're going to make do with what we have and make this a success either way. So we were definitely caught off guard this year when it comes to our bees. Most of the things that we've read and most of the experience that's been handed down to us from beekeepers said that do not expect to get honey from your first year hives. They will be busy building their colony and they will be busy building their own stores. Well, we were caught totally by surprise when we were adding supers to our bees this year. We must have got them at the right time and you know a few of the things that we did as beekeepers I think really helped them along to ensure that they were further along by fall than they should have been and so you know we kind of made a last minute oh shoot order with a, a local beekeeping company and so we've got we've got a big extractor here we've got a few supplies here um, but really I'm pretty excited. Like I'm super excited that we are, are sitting here. Getting, yeah. Uh, yeah, getting ready to honey or harvest honey. Uh, so we were able to get a little bit of experience assisting the beehive club uh, do their hive. So we're going to apply that knowledge and get ready to do our own. So uh, follow us inside as we lug this big. Don't say it. <laughs> okay, I won't say it this big uh, extractor inside and uh, we'll get it set up and get rolling on the extraction. The extractor is in the house. It was a lot lighter than I expected and thankfully it was assembled because that shaved a bunch of work off of our to-do list. Yeah, it was pretty sweet. I'll take it anytime. Anytime so. something comes assembled and you don't have to mess with it is a good time. So we've come in, we got it set up, we got it plugged in. Uh, we wiped it all down to make sure everything was clean with hot soapy water. We dried everything well to keep the moisture out of the honey. Um, all of our supplies are freshly washed and dried, so we're pretty much down to the fun part yeah, now. I think we're ready to roll. So as you can see here, we have uh, three honey supers. We have we went with the mediums just to keep weight down for when you know we're pulling off the boxes. So uh, our extractor, what, it takes 20 of the medium frames? 20 medium frames, yeah. So um, just a little bit of a context to our hives. We had a stronger hive and a weaker hive this year. Uh, so we had one box, or I guess one super on the weaker hive that got three quarters of the way drawn out on each of the frames. Drawn and capped, Sorry, I Sorry, drawn capped full of honey. Uh, right. so, so, you know, we should have a good harvest on that one. And then on the two on the strong hive, one of them was pretty much completely filled with honey, capped off. And ready and to And then go. pretty much ready to harvest. And then the second one, for the most part, it was only partially drawn out. So they'll have a good start on that next year. So when we pull these out, you're going to see that we're going to be pulling off probably 10 of the medium supers that we're not going to throw in here. Because they so, have nothing to extract. Yeah, so we should be able to get all 20 of our frames that have honey and spin it all at one time, which is gonna make this easy and quick. So. Yeah, but like it's kind of crazy to me that like a year's worth of work or six months of work will be done in five minutes. So that's kind of the cool thing about having such a large extractor is that it will be very quick. Yeah, and it's quick this year, so, you know, we started out this year just with two highs, but, you know, throughout the year we started talking and we definitely want to add a few more next year. So again, always plan for, I guess... Future-proof. 
to, yeah, future proof it. So we didn't want to buy an extractor where it only worked for a few years and then we had to get rid of it. So, you know, we're in a good situation. We were able to spend the extra money right off the bat and buy one that's going to fit our purpose for the long term. Um, either way, like I said, um, it'll probably end up different for your situation, but we figured this worked best for ours. So um, we're going to start pulling frames out, get this thing loaded and see, I guess, all our hard work come out the bottom end over there. As you can see, this one is uncapped with a little bit of honey in it. So we'll throw this one in. Um, and like we figure with the total amount of honey that we have capped compared to what isn't capped, we should, we are figure what? Overall, we're probably over that 80% capped. I would say so. So we should be uh, within our moisture range, but we do have a refractometer to check it once we're done. And then we went with just a regular old serrated bread knife. Some of this comb looks to be above the frame, so we will see. Now this comes off and we're gonna take our time just because uh, it's kind of our first year. Don't wanna rush, we'll see how this works out. Oh my gosh, that's it, that's honey, honey. Yeah, so I'm just going to. So we did try regular uncapping knives and we tried um, on unserrated and serrated and these capping forks when we were with our local bee club um, harvesting their honey. And so Kevin really found that he preferred the uncapping forks like he's using right now because he found that he was able to just take just the cappings and leave as much of the comb as possible. Yeah, you can see the difference between the knife and the uncapper. It's a little bit more tedious, but I feel we're gonna leave the existing like honeycomb, uh, honeycomb in, in, intact, you know, so. That's less work for the bees, which may mean increased production for us next year. So the less work that they have to do building comb, the more um, resources they can put towards honey. So our goal is to, you know, minimally impact what they've left yeah, like, us. Look at how nice I can do that one compared to that with the knife. Kevin also previously mentioned that when we went to order some things for this um, extractor and our harvesting order, there was there was some stuff that was out of stock. So one of the things that we were hoping to grab was an uncapping table. And unfortunately there were none available when we placed our order. So we are just using a chafing pan that I have because of my food block and a mesh cooling rack. So what we'll do is we'll sit all the wax on top of the rack, let the honey drip down, and then we'll feed it again through the double mesh strainer.
Well, that went nice and quick. As you can see, our makeshift capping station is full of beeswax. We got our leftover medium frames that will spin afterwards. These ones didn't have hardly any honey in it, but we still want to get that out before we store them for the winter. And Allie, what do you got over there? I got 20 frames of liquid gold ready to go. All we have left to do is hit the button and I'm pretty excited. I'm excited to see what we get out of this. That's a wrap for the extracting. So I have a spatula and a dough scraper or bowl scraper, whatever you want to call it, that I use for sourdough baking. I am going to get in here and get sticky. I'm going to squeegee all of the honey off the sides to send it back down through the honey gate. And then pretty much all we got to do is clean this bad boy and get it in storage for next year. After that, we have to leave our honey settle for about 24 hours uh, in case any cappings or anything made it through the double screen. And then what do we get to do? Uh, well, we already tasted it and it was oh so my gosh, delicious. It's so uh, good. But one thing that we did notice is there is a difference, obviously, in the taste from our honey to the Bee Club's honey. And it's interesting to see the different floral notes or, like, or even taste, just like texture, the depth. The depth. Yeah. Like, I found the one from the Bee Club very sweet without much. Um, so, like yeah, it was just very sweet honey, which is great, awesome. Ours maybe because they're forestry bees, I don't know. Like they they leave their hive and go straight into the forest. The depth of flavor in our honey is like spectacular. I am so excited. Yeah, we're excited to get it bottled up and start sharing it with our friends. So, yeah, I would say that is a successful first year of beekeeping. Obviously, we have lots more to learn, but overall, I think it went really well. I agree. So I guess that's it. I'm going to clean this bad boy, or Kevin's even going to give me a hand. We'll bottle everything up tomorrow, and... On to the next project, <laughs> which is clean up, get ready for winter. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a few days since we've extracted the honey. As you can see, we still have our stuff set up in the kitchen. So we need to get on to the next step, which will mean reclaiming back our kitchen, which is gonna be fabulous. Hallelujah. We are ready to um, bottle up the honey in this pail and the other pail, and we are super excited to share with you the money shot from Honey Harvest 2023. All in all, we are super happy with our first year of beekeeping. We spent many years talking about bees before finally committing and I am so glad we did. If you're considering getting bees, I highly recommend that you jump in with both feet. Not only is beekeeping an enjoyable pastime, but bees are fascinating and watching them grow their hives has been a great experience for us. One of the best things we did as fledgling beekeepers was to join a local bee club. The cost for a family membership was only $80 and I truly believe that we got way more than that in terms of education from the club. Although it seems straightforward, there's a steep learning curve when it comes to beekeeping and having a local club made it easy for us to ask questions to experienced beekeepers in our area, which was incredibly valuable as location can change many factors in beekeeping. Another thing that we did was to take part in a one-day beekeeping course. This course did not have any hands-on activities, but taught us tons about bees, including their anatomy, the way they think, how hive cases work, and more. This was really valuable knowledge to us as new beekeepers, as we are able to react to situations in the hives based on behavior, and we kind of know how they'll react now that we understand how the hive brain works. Even though we weren't expecting to harvest any honey this year, we were pleasantly surprised. Prior to extracting the honey, Kevin and I played a game with the kids. Everyone guessed how much honey we'd get. 
Obviously, the Price is Right rules were in effect, much to Kevin's chagrin, as he was technically the closest with his guess of 50 pounds. But our daughter edged out the win with her guess of 52 pounds. Our final harvest tallied 50.6 pounds, and we are pumped. Little guessing games like these are a fun way to get the family together and talking about our projects. Plus, who doesn't want bragging rights? One thing that didn't make it into the video despite Kevin mentioning it was testing the moisture level of the honey with a refractometer. Here's a quick photo of our honey in the refractometer and it shows 16.5%. This allows us to safely bottle the honey without the worry of fermentation. We look forward to expanding our small apiary in 2024 and Kevin swears he's going to win the guessing game next fall. 